Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I am bringing you today's word for December 10th, 2019. I'm teaching a series entitled Grace and Truth, and this is part 64 of the overall series. The title of today's message is The Grace of God is on you. I want to let you know as a born-again, blood-bought believer that the grace of God, if you're in Christ, the grace of God is already on you to do what God has called you to do and to overcome every challenge that you will encounter on the path to your destiny. So let's get into the word this morning. John 1 and 14, John 1 and 17 are the foundational scriptures for this series. In John 1 and 14, the Bible says that the word, Jesus, became flesh. He dwelt among us. We were able to behold his glory. It was the glory of the only begotten of the Father who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. In verse 17, the, the apostle John juxtaposes Old and New Testament. He says the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. And so we've been, we've been doing like a compare and contrast. And we studied Galatians chapter three, chapter four, chapter five, chapter six, where the apostle Paul did an amazing job of laying that out, of, of, of juxtaposing or comparing and contrasting the old covenant with the new covenant. And now that we were done, that we're done with Galatians chapter six, yesterday we looked at the benediction to Galatians chapter six, this morning, I felt led to just, I'm going to give you several scriptures this morning. I believe we're going to look at five different scriptures. And as I read these to you, uh, I want you to listen carefully and prayerfully. The point of what we studied in Galatians, the point of what I'm bringing up today, the, the recurring theme that we're seeing in this series is that the law required things of us and grace has already provided for us, right? And so there's there's these there's these concepts that under the old covenant we were performing to do, we were performing to be. That there was this requirement on us, and under the new covenant we have to come to the realization that that it's already done, and God has al already provided things for us. And so now we're, it's a different way to live. We are walking in discovery mode. We are, we are discerning the things that God already planned, and so then we walk those things out. And we do this by faith. So let's look at these uh, five scriptures this morning. As I read these to you, I want you to open up your heart and listen, right? Just listen uh, with spiritual ears. I pray that, the, that, that your ears would be open to hear, that your eyes would be open to see, and that your heart would be open to understand. All right, five scriptures, and then we'll get into it. Here. Jeremiah 1 and 5 from the New International Version says, this is God, before I formed you, this is He's speaking to Jeremiah, but he's speaking to you. Before I formed you in the womb, I already knew you. Before you were born, I had already set you apart, and I appointed you to be a prophet unto the nations. That's what he told Jeremiah, but he appointed you to be whatever it is that he called you to be, and he did this before you were born. In Psalms 139 and 16, Message Bible, the Bible says, like an open book, this is David speaking, you watched me grow from conception to birth. All the stages of my life were spread out before you. The days of my life were all prepared before I ever lived one day, before I ever took one breath. That's what David said in Isaiah 49 and 1. This is what Isaiah said. Listen to me, all you in distant lands. Pay attention, you who are far away. The Lord called me before my birth. From within the womb, the Lord called me by name. He was saying, before my mother and my father gave me a name, the Lord called me by name. Galatians 1, 15 and 16, Paul says, but even before I was born, this is Paul acknowledging that he was a terrorist, that he killed Christians, that he persecuted the church, that he was on the wrong side for many years of his life. He's saying, before I was even born, God already knew I was going to do all of that, but it didn't matter to God. God called me anyway. Before I was even born, God chose me and called me by his marvelous grace. Then it pleased him to reveal his son to me that I would go out and then preach the good news about Jesus to the Gentiles. In Ephesians 2 and 10, the apostle Paul said, God has made us what we are. In Christ Jesus, God made us new people. Why, Paul? God made us new people, the Bible says, so that we could spend the rest of our lives doing the good things that he had already, past tense, planned for us to do. I pray that you were listening to those scriptures, that you were really considering what the Holy Spirit is saying, which is why you need to get 
today's word in your email inbox so that you can go over the notes, right? So go to todaysword.org and sign up and you'll get all my notes in your email inbox for free. But what does this mean to you today? Those five scriptures and this the, within the context of this series, what are those scriptures mean to you today. I have two things to share with you on this morning. Now, I really want you to kind of lean in to what the Holy Spirit is saying through me. Two things. Number one, here we go. God's grace or his ability is already on you to do what he called you to do. It's already done. His grace is on you already. His grace is on you to perform. His grace is on you to win. God is sovereign. So what does that mean, Rick? What, What that means is that he knows all things right? And so he knows everything. There's nothing he doesn't know. Has it ever occurred to you that nothing occurs to God, (laughs) right? God never gets an epiphany. He knows everything. He knows everything. The light bulb never comes on for God because he already knows everything. So God is sovereign. He knows all things. And he planned out our lives in accordance with his foreknowledge of our decisions. So let me be clear. Our decisions do matter. You will reap what you sow. I will reap what I sow right? So our decisions matter. It's just that God doesn't have to wait till next Monday to find out what you're going to do next Monday. God doesn't have to wait till next Thursday to find out what you're going to decide on next Thursday. So what God did is he planned out our lives in accordance with his foreknowledge of our decisions. So he planned out our lives beforehand, informed by his foreknowledge of our decisions. So God is sovereign, but our decisions still do matter. And we still got to preach the gospel and only they that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, that kind of thing, right? So why am I driving home the sovereignty point? I'm driving this home is because it, it would be unrighteous of a sovereign God, of a God who knows everything. It would be unrighteous of a sovereign God to expect you to do something that he hasn't already equipped you to do. So our God is righteous. He's not going to do that. That means that he equips us to do everything that he expects us to do. Let me say that again. Whatever he expects you to do, he already equipped you to do. His instruction is always equal to his injection. So when you get a hold of this concept in your heart, it will bring you peace. It will bring you confidence. So what this means is that every time God tells you to do something, every time, no matter how big it may seem to you, your first thought should be this. This is what you should think. The fact that God has called me to do this is proof that his grace is already on me and in me to perform it. God is not going to give me grace. He already did it. I already have it. I can already do it. I must now rest in God's finished work. So it's not that God is requiring something of me that I can't do. He's requiring something of me that he already graced me to do. And so I have to believe that God's grace, his super is on my natural to do whatever he calls me to do, no matter how big it seems. See, God called you. And then he equipped you and he prepared you for everything that you would ever need to accomplish his divine assignment. He did all of this before the world began. So God will only require of you what he has already deposited in you, right? Are you getting the point? If he's calling you to do it, it's because you already have it. Under the new covenant, we're not performing to receive anything from God. We're not trying to earn anything. Our goal now is to hear from heaven concerning the plans that God made for us before the world began. And as we know, as we get a revelation of those plans, then we launch out in faith to bring those things to pass. And we do this fully believing that God has already equipped us for the assignment. We're not performing for the assignment. That's old covenant. We're performing because we have been assigned. That's new covenant. So I'm not performing trying to earn something. I'm performing because God called me to do it. And the fact that he called me to do it means that, that he has already given me the grace to, to make it happen. To, now, his part is grace. That part is done. I have to now launch out in faith. So making this personal as I close out this first point. Your job, look at me. Your job after you're born again is to spend time with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will reveal to you the plans that God made for you before the world began. And once you know what those plans are, You have to believe that God's grace is on you to bring those plans to pass, no matter how big they seem, no matter how far beyond your wildest dreams they are. If God revealed it, it is because he planned it and his grace is already on you to do it. You got to get this down in your heart. His part is grace. Your part, my part is faith. His part is already done. He's waiting on us now. Our part 
is to go out and believe and receive and to launch out in faith to perform what God already planned. So my question for you this morning is, are you ready? It's time for you, for me, to live the life that God planned for us. We do this by his grace. We do this for his glory. Number two, two points for this morning. Along with the grace to perform, God has already given you the grace to overcome. And this is, encourage, this is encouragement for somebody that's facing a challenge this morning. Not only did God give you the grace to perform the assignment, but he also gave you the grace to overcome everything that you would face along the way. God never said it would be easy. He just promised to never leave you, to never forsake you, to never turn his back on you, to never relax the grip that he has on you. So if you are facing it, then God trusts you with it. it we all have a breaking point, right? So I believe that we all have a breaking point. And God, and God knows everything. And since God knows everything, he's sovereign and we all have a breaking point. We have to believe that God is not going to allow us to face something that we can't handle. God would not allow us to be tempted beyond our ability because God, so he would never allow you to face something that he has not given you the grace for. So when you're facing something, watch this, this is what you have to remind yourself that if I'm facing it is because God's grace is on me to, to face it, to do it, to perform it, to overcome it. If I did not have the grace for it, I would not be facing it. Just the fact that it is in front of me is evidence that God's grace is on me to handle it and to rise above it. God has already given me the grace. God has already given you the grace. Many believers ask God for less challenge. And what God does is he responds like he responded to Paul. Instead of giving you less challenge, I'm going to give you more grace. So I'm not going to take the challenge away, but my grace is on you to overcome. My grace is on you to rise above every obstacle. My grace is on you to win over everything you, that you face on the road to your destiny. So you're not trying to work for it. Our job is to rest in God's finished work, to rest, believing that as far as God is concerned, is already done. And for us in the earth, it's just a matter of time. So what we have to do is embrace the grace to do, embrace the grace to, to perform, embrace the grace to overcome because we already have it. It's not something that we're going to get. It's something that we already have. It's already done. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to lift up your voice and declare this over your life. This may be a message you need to watch more than once. Speak this. Say, Father, I thank you for teaching me about your amazing grace. I choose to give my attention to your finished work. When I am facing a challenge, meditating on your grace <laughs> frees me from the stress, struggle, and strain of this world. There have been times when I asked you for less challenge, but what you did was respond with more grace. So Father, I embrace your grace. I become a conduit of your power. I rest in your ability. I know your grace is already on me to perform your will and to rise above every challenge that I face on the road to my destiny. Therefore, I face every challenge head on, in faith, without a doubt, fully relying on your supernatural power because I know you have already given me the victory. So I enter into your rest and I rest in your finished work. In heaven, it's already done. For me, in the earth, is only a matter of time. I declare this by faith. In Jesus' name, amen. This is today's word. Please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, why not? Go to todaysword.org, click on the subscribe button, put your email address in there, and you're going to get uh, these messages in your email inbox every day for free. Head into this day knowing that God's grace is already on you. You already have it. You, you have the grace to perform. You have the grace to overcome, embrace it, and live an amazing life. Do me a favor. Share this message right now on your social media, on your timeline, with your friends. I love you and God loves you. Have an amazing day. God bless you.